What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 30 of the Chat It Up podcast. As always, I'm your host, Shooter, bringing you interviews, news, and reviews about all things Upper Peninsula. Hope you all had a great weekend. I had a really nice four-day weekend. My girlfriend's parents, they came up from Detroit for a visit, and uh, we showed them all around Iron Mountain, and uh, it was a blast. We took them to the, uh, the Cornish Pump and World War II Glider Museum, and if you've never been there, I highly recommend it. Uh, I kind of consider myself a history buff, and I actually learned quite a few things about the Iron Mountain Kingsford area that I didn't know previously. So, uh, as I mentioned, if you've never been there, you should be sure to check it out. It's it's really cool. Uh, all right, this episode's going to be a little different than usual, uh, as it marks the finale of Season 1. And I'll get to that a little bit more in a few minutes, but first, uh, let's run through some segments. So... We're going to start things off with Youper News. And uh, my first piece of Youper News is that uh, the 28th annual Humongous Fungus Festival kicked off this weekend over in Crystal Falls. Uh, Now, if you're unaware, this festival celebrates a giant fungus that covers nearly 185 acres underground from Crystal Falls all the way to the Alpha area. Um, I I read that this, this fungus is uh, 882,000 pounds and that it's considered the largest contiguous life form on earth. Uh, So for this festival, they've got races, parades, cookouts, and a lot of other great events. Uh, And it actually brings a lot of people uh, into that community. Um, But definitely talk about a a unique piece of youper culture that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, Speaking of festivals... Uh, my second piece of Uper news is that the UP State Fair starts a week from today. So the fair runs from August 12th to the 18th, and it's over in Escanaba. Uh, I know the biggest headliner is Billy Ray Cyrus is playing the grandstand on Saturday, but if I'm being honest, the biggest headliner at the UP State Fair, in my opinion, is Norm's French Fries. <laughs> uh, I'm getting hungry just talking about them. Uh, anyways, so the UP State Fair is always an awesome event, and there's lots of things to see and do, so be sure to head over to Esky to check that out. Uh, my last piece of Uper news is unfortunately some sad news. Uh, I found out on Friday that uh, Clyde of Clyde's Drive-Ins passed away this past week at uh, 90 years old. Uh, now, Clyde's Drive-In is an absolute staple for so many people driving through St. Agnes and also their locations in uh, the Sioux and Manistique. They have the most delicious burgers, uh, most notably their Big C burger, which is also named after Clyde. And, you know, not only are Clyde's drive-ins a Uper institution, but from what I've gathered and what I've read, he was a great businessman and he was really a beloved person in his community. So, uh, you know, may Clyde, you know, the Uper icon that he is, may he rest in peace and may his legacy live on for many years to come. Okay, it's time uh, for This Day in Uper History, brought to you by the good folks over at Pasty.com and the Pasty Central Facebook page. That's P-A-S-T-Y dot com and the Pasty Central Facebook page. And here it is, August 5th, This Day in Uper History. Pasty Central Day in History, August 5th. On this day in 1966, the U.S. Forest Service purchased almost 19,000 acres in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The land was the private estate of the Fisher Brothers of Fisher Body fame. A forest of virgin timber surrounding almost 4,000 acres of water that includes 36 named lakes, along with several that were unnamed. The former Sylvania Club at one time occupied the land and entertained famous visitors such as President Eisenhower, Lawrence Welk, and Bing Crosby. The property had a price tag of $5.74 million and was acquired with funds collected by the Forest Service through its land and water conservation program. Today, it's part of the Ottawa National Forest, welcoming travelers to the Sylvania Wilderness at the Ottawa Visitor Center, just south of Watersmead. Pasty Central Day in History, August 5th. All right. Thanks again to the folks at Pasty.com and the Pasty Central Facebook page for this day in Uper history. Now, normally, this would be the time in the episode where I'd have an interview for you guys to listen to, but uh, I don't have one this week, which is part of the reason why this is the season finale. So, 
Unfortunately, you're stuck listening to me the rest of the way out. Uh, But I promise you that by the end of this episode, everything will be crystal clear. And, uh, you know, but to wrap up this season, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer some questions uh, from some listeners. And then I'm going to kind of just recap some of my main highlights from season one. Uh, So the first question that I have comes from a buddy of mine, Mr. Travis Poopor. Uh, He and I grew up together. He lives down in Green Bay now, but he's a very loyal listener. So I want to give Travi a special shout out. But uh, his question is, where's one place in the UP you haven't been to, but you feel the need to make a trip to? Uh, Now, this is an awesome question. And I would have to say the number one place I've never been in the UP that I would die to go to is uh, a place called Granite Loma. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, Granite Loma is this humongous 26,000 square foot log cabin that sits on the shores of Lake Superior. Uh, it's north of Marquette, kind of near the Huron Mountain Club. And, uh, this place is incredible. It's got like 50 bedrooms and they're all decorated differently. They all have their own theme. Um, it was built by this guy named Lewis Kaufman. Uh, I believe it took between 1919 and 1923 and it took over 400 people to build this place. And even back then it cost like $5 million to build. So I don't know what that would equate to in today's money, but it's gotta be just something crazy. Um, and in this place is actually a national historic landmark. And, uh, ever since I first learned of this place, I've been just really, really interested in the history of it and how it's very secluded but it's very grand I I believe it's actually the largest log cabin in the world I could be wrong about that but um Kaufman had built it as a summer retreat to kind of like rival the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts of the world and it's crazy that he did it here in the UP and I believe it sits on like 415 acres and I I think that Muhammad Ali, or I had heard he was interested in possibly buying it in the 70s, but that it had really kind of fallen into disrepair. And um, But eventually somebody had kind of restored the whole place back in the late 80s. And I know it's had a few owners since then, and I believe the current owner actually has it up for sale for 20-some million dollars. Um, (laughs) It's actually kind of embarrassing. I can rattle off all this information about the place off the top of my head, but as I mentioned, I've had a huge interest in this place, so... I guess if anybody listening has some sort of a connection to Granite Loma and you can hook me up, uh, shoot me a message or something because I would absolutely kill uh, to go and check this place out. Um, But the other kind of second half of my answer to Travis's question is there's actually a ton of places across the UP I'd like to revisit. Um, You know, growing up, I had awesome parents that really took me out sightseeing all across the UP. Um, So I've seen most of the major landmarks from Ironwood to Mackinac Island and everywhere in between, but I saw a lot of them in my early teens. And I'd love to kind of go back as an adult because I'm sure that I'd have a much kind of different appreciation and perspective for them now that I'm older. So that's really kind of an ongoing goal of mine is to kind of revisit all of these, uh, you know, landmark places across the UP. The second question that I received is uh, from Susan Weideman, and her question is, how do you choose your topics or guests? And again, this is a great question because it's probably the number one question that I get from people. Um, I've mentioned this a couple of times before, but prior to ever starting the podcast, what I did is I sat down and I made a list of everyone I know personally or that I at least knew of. Um, that was doing something really cool or noteworthy either in the UP or maybe it was a UPer doing something cool somewhere else uh, in the world. And the list ended up being like three pages long and I was really kind of overwhelmed at how many people were on this list and I wasn't really sure how to approach it. Um, So from there I was kind of basically just going off of that list and trying to get a good mix of topics a good mix of people and a good mix of places around the UP because I mean really at the end of the day variety is key but in a way that's also kind of difficult because a lot of the major stuff that's going on around the UP is based on areas with the largest populations now that that's not to say that there aren't some things going on in other places but a lot of the major kind of stuff going on focuses around the bigger cities or higher population areas Um, The other kind of difficult thing is there was some parody in the list. Um, 
you know, that's not a knock on what anybody's doing, but there are some people out there that are kind of running in similar circles and doing similar things. So I tried to kind of map out against, you know, some variety to the guests. And another kind of challenge with that comes scheduling because everybody has their own schedules, including myself. And obviously because this is a hobby for me, I need to be a little bit selfish and schedule things that work on my schedule. But sometimes that doesn't always jive with with guests or people I'd like to speak to and what their schedule looks like. So I try to make things as easy on myself as I can, um, scheduling wise. Um, another main priority when I'm kind of picking topics or guests is I need to make sure that I can get enough content out of the interview. And what I mean by that is I've had a few people approach me quite aggressively about coming on the podcast, basically just kind of inviting themselves on and, which is fine and great. I appreciate suggestions and that type of thing. Um, as I kind of asked some people questions or try to get a feel for how they might be on the podcast, I would get maybe one word answers or maybe only really five or 10 minutes worth of actual conversation. And, you know, it's not like I'm doing this podcast just to give free plugs to businesses or bands or festivals or things like that. So the other portion of it is, I'm looking for stories with depth, with passion, and with kind of a bigger purpose. So I do have to factor in kind of that personality aspect is what I call it. Uh, You know, some people are just great storytellers and they're very personal and some people really aren't. And that's okay that some people aren't. It's just then maybe coming on the podcast isn't necessarily the right fit. So I know I'm kind of rambling at this point, but the long story short is... I pick my topics and guests based on what I personally find cool and interesting and uplifting and I think sometimes maybe that differs from other people's opinions and that's okay. Um, I'm really just trying to keep a good variety and I'm, I just really try to schedule far enough out and easy enough that it doesn't become a burden on me because obviously a hobby shouldn't be a burden, it's supposed to be fun. Um, and this is actually kind of a perfect segue into uh, me addressing why I'm ending season one. So as I've mentioned over and over, this is strictly just a hobby for me and I'm not generating any income from this. I'm strictly just doing it because I love the UP. And obviously I feel very strongly that there are incredible stories out there tied to the Upper Peninsula that should be told and, and need to be heard. Now, all of that being said, Summer is a really busy time of year for everyone, myself included. Um, Add on top of that busyness, I moved back to my hometown and purchased a new house. And I'll just be honest, it's been really difficult to find time to put the podcast together this summer. And I'm also not the type of person that's going to half-ass anything. So I would never want to put something out there that I'm not proud of or that I wouldn't stand behind. And... I've also, the rest of the month of August, I've actually got some vacation time coming up and we've got people coming to visit our new house and I don't want to be stressing over the podcast because if I do, that's really, I'm not being fair to myself or the people that I care about the most and I'm really also not being fair to all of you guys listening in because if I'm struggling just to put something out, uh, just to put something out, then really nobody wins. So... Now that all of you kind of know where I'm coming from, the game plan is I'm going to take a breather for basically kind of the rest of the summer. Uh, I'm going to use that time to regroup and kind of build a game plan for the second season. And, you know, I'll get to working on it when I feel the timing is right. I'm not going to put any sort of set deadline on it right now. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are, are anxiously awaiting or hoping to know when season two starts. I will say it should start by the fall, but that's all of the update I'm going to have for now. Cause I really, I don't want to put any, any sort of undue pressure on myself. Um, so with all that being said, um, it's time for the takeaways from season one and, I'll be honest, it's kind of hard to put the experiences from the first season, like into the right words 
So what I've done is I actually went back through each and every single episode and I wrote down each takeaway that I had from those episodes. Um, And there were a few kind of major themes that really kind of stick out that I'll just kind of touch on to kind of wrap up this season here. Um, So one that kind of kept coming up over and over again is collaboration. You know, whether it's businesses collaborating together or maybe it's a school collaborating with local businesses or maybe it's just people from different organizations collaborating together. It keeps coming back to people collaborating is just paramount for our communities to be thriving in vibrant places. Um, Without that collaboration, if everybody's just kind of doing their own thing, um, nobody wins when when that happens. So um, another kind of continued theme that I, I kept coming across is taking that leap and, and just stepping up and going for it. So often we have ideas and dreams and we talk about them and we talk about them and we talk about them. But at a certain point, you need to start walking the walk and not just talking the talk in order to to making those things become a reality. And there were countless people that I interviewed throughout, you know, the course of this season that they're still doing awesome stuff. And it was really just taking that first step and taking a chance and taking that leap that that really kind of just put the wheels in motion because unfortunately, you know, 90% of people don't take that leap and go after their, their goals and their dreams. Um, another really big kind of theme that I kept coming across over and over is just community. And it, it kind of piggybacks off of that collaboration, but it's just people helping people in times of need people just stepping up and volunteering in huge ways to make events happen it it all just circles back and and is all encompassed in one word which is community Um, now you can look at that as either the up is one gigantic community which it is um, but we also have obviously our own unique individual communities all throughout the up and they thrive on people it's it's all about the people and really at the end of the day at the end of this season my final takeaway is the people the people of the upper peninsula are incredible in so many unique and different ways and they truly are the driving force of what makes the upper peninsula so great so I just want to say to Bugsy Sailor, Dr. Will Rankinen, Gina Walner, John Spigarelli, Gina Jackwart Thorson, Jeremy Simons, Brandon Urkla, Jason Markstrom, Mike Forrester, Tim Ellis, Allison Kirksey, Joe Redinger, Larry Lindholm, Bryce Derwine, Seth Anderson, Jason Rowling, Nick Blodgick, Susan Devine, Dave Nyberg, Anna Dravlin, Mario Santoni, Tara Hartman, Kyle and Megan Bloomquist, Keith Anderson, Marina Dupler, Mark Klossner, Chad Susat, Chris Van Abel, and last but certainly not least, Nina Itner. Thank you all. A very, very heartfelt thank you for allowing me to share your stories with the world. And my biggest hope is that your stories have inspired others as you all continue to inspire me on a daily basis because that's really what this is all about. It really, truly has been an honor, and I've had an absolute blast along the way putting this podcast out. So I'd like to extend that same amount of gratitude to all of you guys listening in right now. I cannot begin to tell you how much it means to me to see people tuning in or or find out about people tuning in from all over the globe and to get feedback from you and words of encouragement. It, it's, it's just incredible, and it, it's it's motivating and it's also humbling all at the same time. So with all of that being said, I'll end this episode and this season the same way that I've ended the last 29. 
And that's with saying thank you for listening in. I'm your host, Shooter, reminding you to keep your chin up and your eyes forward.